Hello everyone and welcome to Debbie Designs and Sewing Australia. I'm Deb and by popular demand, I am going to show you my mother's button box and this creepy clown tin full of haberdashery. So stay tuned. Welcome everyone, I'm Deb, this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia and today I'm going to go through my mother's button haberdashery stash and a suitcase full of fabric that's got goodness only knows what in it from how many years ago. Um, so let's start first on the button box and the reason that I have these things is because we needed to clean out dad's house Mum passed away uh, more than 16 years ago, but uh, Dad's been living by himself. He's 96 next month, and he needs to go into aged care for a bit more assistance. And um, so he's selling his house, so we had to clean out so many years worth of stuff. It's made me come home and start to clean out my cupboards. I'll show you what we've got first. So, this is mum's button box. I hope you can see properly. It's in an old Tupperware container. It's clearly been too close to the iron at some stage and I would suspect that I probably did that to it. This is the only button box I've ever known. I've never known mum to ever have a different button box. I can remember rummaging through the buttons when I was probably seven or eight, so. It's been in this container for at least 55 years. So what have we got first? Seven buttons for $1.55. Doesn't say what year it is. The brand's Butron, but on the back, it's got Butterick patterns and Vogue patterns written on it. And of course, in those days, you didn't need to say where things were made. Now, who's some buttons stuck on an embassy card and embassy was Coles. Um, and it wasn't Coles supermarket, it was Coles variety store in those days. And it's 98 cents and, whoops, it's flipping around everywhere. And you got the thread. Look at that. At the top, you got thread there that matched. It's like a little sewing kit. Here's some more Embassy for $1.13 and that also has the thread wrapped around the top of it, which would be quite handy. And she's just got odds and sods of little buttons that obviously came on clothing. It smells weird, this box it smells like mothballs. So here's some more Boutron buttons but these ones are $1.85 and I would suspect are a little bit newer because if we compare the two, the font is slightly different. And these ones are a little bit dearer and the back of the card also says Packed in Australia by Boutron Australia Limited. I've never heard of Boutron. I don't know who they are. It must be from like the 60s. More Boutron buttons, $1.55. More embassy buttons, $1.13, complete with the thread. More Boutron buttons, but there's only one button and there's no proper card. More Boutron buttons for $1.55. Buttons from Target for $2.45. Some nylon thread that obviously mum's made with something. More just odds and sods of little buttons. Oh, look at these giant weird shank buttons. They would have been off someone's, off a cardigan, I would suspect. I have put a towel down on my ironing board so it doesn't get putrid. It's 
see if they will I recognize these buttons they're school dress buttons they're off all of our school dresses I suspect that at one stage mum did make school dresses because I think in the 70s school dress might have cost $75 which was a lot of money then but once she'd made two she decided that it wasn't worth it because there were so many parts to it and it was just too fiddly for her so mind you we didn't use that we were pretty little and so we stayed the same size for a long time so we didn't really need it was only when they changed the style of the dresses because i think the two my two older sisters started off in a different style of dress when I went to form one I had a different style of dress and that style carried all the way through and when my girls went to the same school it was only slightly different than what I wore it was pretty similar so there's all the school dress buttons I can't see anything else that I recognize instantly except these weird, like they're big when you look at how big they are. With that shank on the back, sort of a shank, but it's designed to sit flat. Um, definitely off for hand knitted cardigans. And mum did a lot of knitting. Yeah, there's another one of that. That's what they'll be from. That's what those big navy blue ones will be from as well. A leather button. And this is a genuine leather button. It's even got a leather shank on it. I wonder if they even make things like that anymore. That's pretty groovy. Don't know what all these giant red ones are off. I can tell you they weren't on anything of mine. I don't think mum ever made me many red things. My stuff was pink. A lot of big buttons, which will have been off cardigans. Cause she did, yeah, see, and there's another one of those shank but flat shank buttons it's just hideous um and that that will be off a cardigan the button's too big to be for anything else and there's a toggle now this is brand new because when i was in i want to say form four which is um year 10 these days I made a quilted Chinese jacket and it had these on it so this will have been the extra one than what came in the packet so I do know what that toggle is for and it probably will come in handy at some stage another one of those buttons with the weird shanks and the awful colors mum what you were thinking And there's all these, and I can remember mum having a cardigan in school dress buttons. Um, a lot of school dress buttons. Something off curtains, because she did make all her own curtains. have a look and see if there's anything more interesting in her that's weird haberdashery tin for all the sewing she did I don't know how she can just have haberdashery in one tin quite frankly she did heaps of sewing
Yeah, but Boutron and Embassy seem to be the brand of buttons. In this Tupperware container. Uh, this I hate clowns. <laughs> There's this tin that I'm not sure if that's zig or zag or, and you might know what that even means if you're not in Australia, but I'm not sure. Um, when were they from? They must have been from the 60s. And they were two clowns and it was a kid's TV show. And you used to go in, you could go in and, and um, be part of the audience for Zig and Zag. So what have we got in here? Some piece of tape that's got rust marks on it now. <gasps> Dorcas pins. Who remembers these? And I think you could get a pink tin as well. I'm not sure if the pink were like, these are dressmakers steel pins. And I'm not sure if the um, pink tin were like lace pins. I'm sure there was a different colour tin as well. I'll just change glasses so I can see if I can see what's written on things. Trademark registered in Great Britain and other overseas countries. What does other overseas countries mean? I do know that's how you get it open. What she got in here? A couple of bobby pins, some sort of a bra strap panty girdle, real stockings, something. And a broken sewing machine needle. Nice, Mum. I don't know what you were keeping that for. Oh, I know what that is. That's a curtain weight. Your curtain cord goes through this part here. And it hangs and holds hold your curtain cord down straight. And mum did make all her own curtains. Oh, this is a brush to brush velvet with. How velvet has a nap. It's actually a steel brush, but it's a very fine steel brush. And I can see it's got pieces of velvet in it. That's what that will have been for. A belt kit? Are you kidding me? A belt kit with nothing in it. Thanks, Mum. For 32 cents, I was looking for belt kits everywhere. And I bet you did make lots of belts too. But this is a slightly different type of one where you make a tube and then you're slipping it over the metal part. So there's, it's got a metal buckle, let's call it, and you slip it over the buckle. And it was 32 cents. Self-covered buttons for 35 cents. They're actually made by Corbon Industries in New South Wales. So that's in Australia. And some rust proof eyelets that I must say have still not gone rusty. Look at those, they are not rusty. And they were 10 cents. How can you get anything for 10 cents? That's old, that would be really old. Some press studs that come from Great Britain, made in England, and they were seven cents. Look at that, how cool is that? And this is needles for household repairs. See, she's actually used a lot of them. Actually used a lot of them. Made in Hong Kong. Wow, you don't get anything made in Hong Kong anymore. 
I think he used to get stuff made in Hong Kong in um, the 60s and 70s, probably even the 80s. Oh, still got the instructions for an old iron. And a core bond iron on patch. With complete instructions on the back. And it costs 25 cents. And a shopping list written on the back of a card. Now, Amoco is a petrol station, or what's commonly known in Australia as a servo. So we buy fuel. And they're offering ladies for free a lovely little needle kit because Amoco have got attention to detail, safety and cleanliness. Wow. Petrol stations don't give away things anymore, do they? Remember once upon a time they used to give away um, stickers and all that sort of thing. Now, here's an iron-on mending patch. And it was manufactured by Iron-on Distributors in Jackson Street, St Kilda. And does anybody know what that means? Does, does that mean 2P? Or I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean 2 cents means something else so it must have been before australia went on to decimal currency very beginning of the 60s that must be from and a little sunbeam brochure hands up if your sisters had one of those hair dryers <laughs> now it's showing how old my older sisters are Oh, an electric razor. And a sunbeam lawnmower. Never heard of it. I thought there were only Victor lawnmowers. I'm just looking for the mix master. That. Hands up if your mum had that mix master. Actually, she had pretty good stuff. That mix master lasted a lot of years. And with five kids and somebody that did a lot of cooking, it lasted really, really well. This is just a little brochure that for some reason is in here. And this is a Dritz tracing kit. Looks pretty old, but the tools are fairly similar to that now. Oh, she's used it. Look at that, she has used it. She's got all the new new pieces in there too, but she certainly has used it. Oh, and from the Women's Weekly, we've got decorative dressmaking. And on the back, we've got some hints for better sewing. It comes from London, it says. Here's a good tip. Never fidget or fiddle with sewing mistake. Either unpick it or completely ignore it. Fidgeting only makes a mistake worse. I would say that is still true today. And this is from 1967. Tells you to do layering to avoid bulky edges. I might keep this and read out a helpful tip with every vlog. Oh my 
god, look at the clothes. Look at the clothes in this. It's like being on Get Smart. Oops, that page is gone. Come out. Oh, it's actually not stapled. So, that will be an interesting book. What's this? Make Your Own Curtains. From a place called Prestige Furnishings. Never heard them. Don't think they still exist. <sighs> Horrible curtains they look like. And some trouser hook and bars for 12 cents. And it looks like it had two hooks. And two bars, but one of the bars is missing, so she must have, I can see that she's opened it there. Um, must have come off someone's either, I don't think that long ago, we would have been wearing school skirts, we would have been wearing school tunics, so it probably came off um, a pair of dad's pants. Curtain rings, more curtain rings. More curtain track fittings, things with cords now. She always had a lining that ran on a separate track than the actual curtains. So you need double tracks. Goodness only knows what that is. Something else off curtains. More curtain tracking stuff. some hooks that's probably cut off a bra or a panty girdle and look here's a suspender belt clip and we never wore any of those oh, i guess my two older sisters might have piece of lego just what we wanted mum oh and something that she's Embroidered. Wonder how to get those clean. And another piece of embroidery, but it was never really finished off. You must have to, oh, I see. You trim it down and then you crochet around the edge by the look of it. Because that looks like that's got that same sort of hole detail here. Like that has. You must trim it down close and then crochet. I bet Deb from Sewing Seams with Deb would know if that's what you do with those. And then a hanky that looks like a Christmas hanky. Man's hanky. And another, like doily or um, table runner, I guess. That looks like it is, it's, this looks, I don't know. Why does that look weird? Oh, let's go this side. Oh, it's this side. It's this side, that looks better. Because that black and the flowers looked a bit weird. And it's got that it's a Senko product. So obviously you do trim off really close to this edge. I wonder if the fabric comes with, I guess the fabric comes with those holes in it. And then you embroider in the middle and then you crochet the edge. I guess that's called crocheting, isn't it? Is that called crocheting or is it called something else? What's tatting? 
someone was telling me about tatting and I don't really know what it is. Here's another one that's ready for the edging, let's call it edging, to be put on. And here's one where the edging has been completed. So, I'm not sure why you didn't finish those, Mum. And an old Vegemite jar. With more curtain things in it. A lot of curtains. A razor, razor blades. Unheard. Oh, look at these. Look at these. I've actually got a photo of me in what these flowers were on. I'll show you because my sister gave it to me the other day because it was still at mum's. And just like that, I am back. So these flowers, which mum cut around and there were light blue ones and there were white ones, has actually, just move the camera so you can see. So, these little flowers were part of a dress that mum made for me when I was nine. And there I am. I was a flower girl at the debutante ball for the lodge. Look at that hair on a nine year old. <laughs> Obviously had my hair set and I had really short hair. I don't know how they got it to do it. And I was wearing a tiara. Look at that. And that, even though those flowers look like they are white, that dress was actually royal blue, like a cobalt blue. So the photo, which is filthy and I might take it out of the frame and throw the frame away, um, has faded a huge amount. So makes me think my children just look exactly like me. Um, yes, so that's what these little flowers were for. Very nice, Mum. Mum did a lot of evening wear, um, sort of sewing. And I think she really liked evening wear sewing. And so do I. I like formal wear sewing. And so probably one of the reasons that I've got a lot of coats is I love making coats because they're more difficult, because they have a lot of steps, because you have to think really hard about it. Um, I do like things that are more difficult. It doesn't make you any money, but it gives you some sort of satisfaction in the end. I guess it's um, the self-satisfaction of making evening wear is really good fun. I'm not sure if that's a piece of stationery, some sort of sewing thing, of some sort of corsetry item that people wore in the old days. There's a lot of dirt in here. And a couple of razor blades, which is not good, Mum. Who leaves loose blow razor blades in something? I'm going to take these things out of the Vegemite jar and put the razor blades in there. Look, razor blades. Real razor blades. that lid on really tight so no one can open it or no children can open it okay so that's what was in mum's stash let me know if anybody knows what that two with that symbol means does it mean men's in a minute so that's not two minutes and maybe it means 2p is pence more than a penny Penny less than a pence, half P, half pence. I'm not sure. 
because by the time I handled money, um, the metric currency was in in Australia. So I know what sixpences are, but only because they were in Christmas puddings. That's the only reason we knew what a sixpence was. And then mum would exchange it for a five cent piece for you because sixpences got more and more difficult to get over time and you couldn't put a normal five cent piece in a um in a christmas pudding you could only put sixpences in so she used to buy them back from us hey i'm thinking probably till i was 15 or 16 she was doing that okay so weirdly that's my mum's stash we could probably go to the suitcase Okay, here we are at the suitcase and from my very earliest memory of fabrics, they were always kept in this suitcase and I couldn't believe it when I saw it that it is the same suitcase. Let's see what she's got in it. I probably should cover that up. Now I don't want to tear mum and dad's address label off their case that they obviously used at some stage so I will just take that over it so I can take it off. What's the case? It's from Drew's Goods in Swanston Street in Melbourne. Okay, well, I can see that probably 17 years ago, mum was using this case still because that was when she was making uh, the little mattresses and pillows and little quilts for the doll's beds and the doll's cradles that um, dad and the woodworking club were making. And I think they used to give those wooden things to underprivileged children. They made other stuff that were that was boy suitable as well. So this wadding will have been for those quilts and mattresses and little pillows. Ooh, I don't know what that's from. There's some cuffing, actually a lot of cuffing, and some fleece, which I'd have to say looks like a really poor quality. And what bag is it in? The mail centre. shopping centers still exist so maybe that's not that old I don't know there's no receipt in the back so that's weird mum we bought something in the Lincraft sale obviously she made something with this because there's a practice buttonhole that she's done. And she's overlocked it. If she had an overlocker, I've still got her overlocker here. Yep, she's definitely cut stuff out of this fabric. It's, it's so painted, the fabric, it's Clearly not been pre-washed, and it feels horrible. Oh my god! Look at this—a half-made pair of surfy shorts. I used to make these and sell them at school, along with batik uh, bikinis, which were just like the triangle tops 
and the triangle back and front for the bottoms on like a like on a drawstring really um and i didn't usually make these um shorts out of satin some of them for some people i did if they asked oh, there's some more fabric i actually usually made them out of um what we called surfy fabric which was like hawaiian print fabric um yeah and that's what they were like they had a zip in the front and it was done just as a lap zip and it had these little pleats in the front and i used to sell them at school and i just had to make sure it was when the nuns weren't looking that i was selling them and I had lots of different sizes for people to try on. I've got no idea what this is from. I think mum had a blouse in that colour, so I suspect she had blouses in that as well. It's just really polyester -y. made out of this but this is quite a good piece of cotton I keep that. some more polyester some more polyester She must have been making fluoro tracksuits in the 80s. I hope that's not what they were, Mum. Scraps of fabric. What else have we got in here? Oh, and an old Maya bag. Must have been from when Maya sold records. I didn't think their logo was ever different than that. Have to wonder what you've been making, Mum. Stuff for little kids. There was always stuff for little kids. That's quite cute, and that's just looks like quilting stuff. wonder what she made out of that obviously she's cut out a whole lot of layers together so maybe it was something for um those dolls beds that she was making oh doing that would be a pretty little quilt but that'd be what she was using that for Oh, and here's a pattern. So obviously making a style dress. She never made it and the pattern is still pinned to the fabric. We've all got some of those treasures. Now, this fabric looks really familiar, and I think I gave Mum some of this fabric when, well, maybe Gail had a, um, when she was making the doll's beds things. Because I think my kids had some, not necessarily clothing, but maybe some other things made out of that. Maybe she cut these to size for the quilts. Oh, she probably has. That's probably the mattress size. 
you know, once it's got padding in it and the edges are turned over. I bet it is. That'd be why they're all they're all cut out to a similar size. So I'm guessing that's uh, a doll, uh, doll's cradle or doll's bed mattress size. More things from Lincraft, which is nothing. What she got from Spotlight? Mmm, some tulle. No receipts in the bags. Yeah, Mum. Oh, in fact, these are the curtains that are in her house now. I'm sure some of the bedrooms have got these curtains. This is all of her leftover curtain fabric. For the house that Dad's selling, I think that's the curtain fabric. so much ribbing mum not even good quality ribbing that is a lot of ribbing that's that's a huge amount of ribbing to buy obviously you didn't buy it from Target I think Target has that kind of thing oh here's a Clegg's bag Oh my god. She bought some nylon. Three meters of nylon. On the 21st of the 7th, 1958. So receipt. And she bought a simplicity patterns pattern. And I don't know what that three six is that three and six. Does that mean it was thirty six pence pennies? Oh, oh no, it wouldn't have been pounds because she wouldn't have been able to afford it. And it's from Meyer Emporium. What well, that's not from Clegg's at all. It's from Meyer which we used to go shopping um, and buy lots of fabric and sewing machines and everything from Meyer in the old days when they had them. And I think this was my sister Helen's. I think she had a shirt dress in this where mum had shirt it really, really, really tightly. And you couldn't see through it, but of course she did have lining as well. Um, it's actually some nice lawn lining. I wonder if it rots if it's in a case. I can't remember if the dress was for Helen or if it was for the Helen's bridesmaids. I can't remember. I remember the fabric and I remember it being a shirt dress and it's a bit of a um, she practiced different things on it too it had like a bit of a border print so it had these much heavier lot of flowers and yeah, so the border must have gone like that. So much less flowers the higher up you get and then going into a border print. It was actually a really pretty dress. I can't remember if it was, I know it was for Helen. I can't remember if it was for her bridesmaids or if it was for her. What else have we got? Things with rusty pins in them. A lot of tear away or stuff you can make your patterns out of.
and some very poor quality knit fabrics. My word, knits have come a long way. Yeah, so even that, I just think it's got, if it's going to have anything other than cotton in it, make it have great recovery. And that does not have great recovery. Ooh, some Christmas fabric. Another Craig's bag. Look at that stunning dress. She was making this for my younger sister. Another one where the pattern's pinned on the fabric. And it's never been made. A Lincraft Frankston receipt from 1997. Oh, remember when the bra shop had those bags? What's in here? A pair of mum's bathers. Maybe they needed repairing, or maybe she was thinking of making a pair from them. Now, I do remember this <coughs> suiting. It's like a really fine hound's tooth suiting. Might be able to get a vest out of that. I can't remember what was made out of that. Can't remember if it was skirts. We did have a lot of pencil skirts um, when we were teenagers and some my older sisters had some really short skirts. By the time I was choosing what I wore, it was a bit more airy fairy because it was, um... Oh, look, here's all spotlight. It's called Creative Colour Wheel. It's mm, quite handy. Might, might be able to use that for Phoebe. These are all just quilting cottons. Yeah, by the time I was a teenager, everything was a bit more floaty and a bit more boho. But the girls that were older than me, they did the whole mini skirt thing. Some more appalling quality. Knit fabric. Gosh, knit fabric was terrible. Ooh, there's a piece of, um, if you want to know what underlining was. So when you make um, a wedding dress, bridesmaids dresses, all that, so a lot of times you'll have the outer fabric, an underlining, and a lining. So this is what underlining is. It's like... Uh, it's not really horse hair because that's a bit coarse, but it's like the old sew-on woven interfacing. If you couldn't get underlining, you could use that woven interfacing. Some facings held together with rusty pins and some sleeves. There's no pattern, so I don't really know what it's for. And there's lining. I get the feeling that that was probably mine at some stage and I didn't make it. What else is she doing? What 
would she have been making out of that? It is a knit. Looks like it's off the end of the bulk. Can you see it's got a number written on it? Which makes me think it's old. The one that they're going to write on fabric. But maybe she had a whole lot of it. Um, yeah, it's got a pin in it. Oh, it's actually not rusty. Wow. I was thinking I would keep that fabric. For a knit, it's pretty good. It's pretty good for a cover for an older type of knit. To make sure I put that pin in my old pin pin. There's a fair bit of this yellow lining around. That's just like a bem silk lining. Just like the, I think it was called acetate lining, in fact. When, oh, look. An old school flag. Don't know who that belonged to. One of us. Another pin that's not rusty. That really is a bit more underlining or interfacing, whichever you would like to use it for and it did the pin in it was not rusty some coat hangers which I would never use because I don't use um, those sort of coat hangers but I might um, give them to the Brotherhood this is the last thing in the case mum what is it Paisley flannelette. I wonder what you were making. Is there anything inside that? I don't think I'd ever use it for anything for myself, but Paisley's quite on trend. I can't say I wouldn't love it if it wasn't hot pink and purple and teal. Like it, I might like it. Hmm, very interesting. That's the end. That's all that was in the case. I did get some photos and that beautiful photo of me from when I was nine with the hairstyle for someone who was clearly 39. So I'll leave it at that. Hope you enjoyed going through mum's stuff. I need to get rid of some things. Some things I will use and I will um, keep all that quilting fabric for Phoebe, for my granddaughter. And I don't know what I'm going to do with all of that flannelette. It's probably decent fabric. Like, I know it's old, but it has been sealed up in the case for a really long time. This stuff, I know, even if it wasn't when Helen got married, it would have been around the time she got married. So I would have been... That would be 50, 50 years ago mum made this dress for Helen or for her bridesmaids or for someone. Someone had it on in church when she, Helen got married. And I know that it was shared with like some big tie-up things here. And, and it was a really pretty, really nice dress. Maybe it was just for Helen something else because you really wouldn't wear a white dress to a wedding would you that was a really big no-no in the old days maybe it was just at that time um 
but the fabric hasn't rotted or anything. I mean, it is a cotton lawn. It's a cotton lawn. And it was lined and... Oh, and there's some hail spot fabric. I wonder what she used that bit for. I don't remember the dress having that over it. Maybe she made a mantilla for church. Who knows? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I will have to find somewhere to put all of this, possibly back in the case for the time being. Um, I don't want to get rid of mum and dad's case. That's like the case we always remember the fabric being in. So it actually means something. And anyway, mum's up there and she's watching. She's up there on top of my bookshelf. So she was in the linen press, now she's on the bookshelf. So everybody have a great week. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.